this is my case too this is a medical student who was diagnosed as a abdominal tuberculosis and he was treated with first line drug uh, when he was diagnosed though there was no uh, uh, bacteria identified in the culture he uh, and then he was put on uh, the 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 uh, anti uh, anti tuberculosis treatment then he developed intestinal obstruction he was operated and then the specimen showed uh, gene expert negative the histopathology showed tb uh, but culture was also showing no growth so this is a, a real problem and uh, afterwards when he had a continuously having a low grade intermittent type of fever uh, after 18 months he he developed a pleural effusion okay and which pleural effusion which was exudative polymorphic nucleoid his gene expert was negative ab culture was negative so he that fluid was sent for ab culture and finally uh, uh, after this was this uh, ct ct images of the lung you know you can see that thick pleural fluid and his culture later on uh, grown m tuberculosis you no know, after almost 18 19 months of his the initial this is a real problem and uh, afterwards uh, this patient we went to pyro sequencing and we found to have a rifampicin and inh resistance okay he has a inh resistant to uh, cat gene the inh uh, uh, a was resistant not detected uh, fluoroquinolone resistance was uh, polymorph polymorphism was detected is not usually associated with the disease so finally we have to plan this patient uh, treatment as per the uh, rifampicin inh detected and uh, resistant detected so we put him on a newer bedaquiline line of therapy and uh, he is under treatment currently so the, if we could have get got a diagnosis early probably a lot of things would have been saved okay so here is the importance of uh, molecular uh, diagnostic technique Uh, and uh, though the uh, we it, it was not detected probably the we could get it only after the culture came positive so this is another challenge of the diagnosis is concerned so treatment goal for a multi drug resistant tuberculosis is the uh, to make the patient non infectious as early as possible so that transmission chain can be prevented decrease tb death related comorbidities and ensuring the relapse free cure and minimize and prevent the development of amplification of drug resistance so that is very important that uh, these patients should be treated the whole idea of treatment drug resistant treatment is decrease the mortality improving the outcome of the patient more improve the morbidity and spread of the disease to be prevented and this is the same flow chart which we uh, generally try to follow to find out the shorter regimens in the treatment of uh, tuberculosis so to understand that shorter uh, uh, sh shorter short regimens without any injectables that's a whole idea of management of um, drug resistant tuberculosis currently that avoid injectables so we have to see that how we can use the newer drugs like bedaquiline dilamidin etc and for that is very important to know the proper gene sequencing of the patient so whole idea of management of tuberculosis is to understand the resistance pattern in the patient so this is a pre treatment evaluation for every tb and mdr tuberculosis they have to undergo a uh, complete treatment complete uh, knowledge about their blood counts liver function thyroid assay urine examination electrolytes because when you are going to treat with bedaquiline it is required okay including the cardiogram okay and this is a line of therapy uh, for short uh, reg regimen is 4 to 6 months of bedaquiline and then uh the for five months is uh, quinolones and uh, clofazamine pyrazinamide and tamivir uh, and there is a short mdr xgr line of therapy again will be four to six months of um, moxiflox cana amikacin this is for a long term uh, regimen management where we are using amikacin as an injectables uh, we are not using now canamycin and tapiramycin but we use the other drugs uh, like ethionamide clofazamine z uh, tamivir high dose inh and so this is a drug combinations we are using i'm not going to the depth of just because you have to understand what exactly i'm uh, trying to find out the uh, the, the overall uh, the challenges which we face is the 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 most important challenge is correct diagnosis if you have no diagnosis proper of mdr xdr then we cannot really use all those drugs okay so long management means uh, 18 to 20 months of therapy okay so that is very important where uh levofloxac and bedaquiline are used in the longer re re regimen okay and these are the drugs we are trying to find out the uh, the regimen okay the group a drugs today are completely changed they are quinolones levofloxac and moxifloxac bedaquiline and lilitulac now these four drugs are included into group a drug okay and all at least include all three medicines to be included 
quinolone, beta quinolone, and lilizolide. Okay, group B. Now the clofazamine has got a lot of importance. And clofazamine, cycloserine, uh, and ethambutol. Okay, so uh, ethambutol come to group C. So at least one from uh, uh, one of the medicines, either clofazamine or cycloserine, we have to include in the regimen. I need to complete the six drugs. The we pick up the drugs from the group C. In that group C, we have ethambutol, dalamidine, pyrazinamide, imipenem, celestine, meropenem, or amikacin. Ethionamide, protonamide, and pass. So out of that, uh, whatever the drugs which I have, then we uh, come and we combine together and try to use the the make a regimen for the patient. So when you talk about the personalized regimen, how we generally plan is to understanding the drug resistance pattern and selecting the drugs. So overall, short term regimen is uh, for approximately around eleven months, and long term comes to around twenty months. This is another important thing that he, the role of surgery, okay, and that's a again challenge. The reason is that he, I personally feel that he, this is a best modality of therapy in some patient who can be completely cured of drug resist, uh, drug resistant tuberculosis. Surgical resection is an adjunct to chemotherapy for a localized lesion. Okay, partial resection is preferred, not the immunectomy. Because it causes morbidity to the patient, and careful selection of the patient is all most important thing. The treatment success was more likely to be when surgery was performed after the culture conversion and uh, than before conversion. So, what is the what does it mean that he if the patient becomes sputum negative or culture negative, we try to operate and decrease the load which is likely to relapse because the MDR and XDR tuberculosis have high relapse rate. Okay, so if you can remove those things, especially if the cavity is persisting. Then it helps the patient. It reduces the bacterial load, lessens the resistant bacteria in the patient, improves cure, reduces the relapse, reduces the spread of to others, and reduces the bacterial load. Makes the patient feel more positive. So you know you are free of infection. That feeling that once patient is to tell me, sir, I am now free of my infection. So that's something great feeling they have, and this is something which is very important to for the patient that he is free of that resistant tuberculosis germs. This is a patient who is a bank manager. Uh, diabetes and uh, he had a hemoptysis and this was a shadow in the lung which was sputum positive and this we was put on first this was era where uh, when the uh, gene expert tests were not available and sputum positive is started on first line drug and he partially responded uh, he gained weight to some extent but fever persisted remember and if you see the part this is a partial response to the therapy we fever Uh, because of the fever, we started an empirically second line therapy planning after understanding the whole treatment history of the patient, what he's received the the past etc. and all that, and we planned the therapy with injectables. Okay, uh, okay uh, uh, and then uh, afterwards uh, there was a very good response to our second line treatment regimen. But we received 120 injection of canamycin, good clinical radiological sputum became negative. Okay. okay. See, this was the patient's uh, condition. But remember, he again got a fever. Okay, so we have to under he has to undergo the uh, again sputum. It came positive, and then again we started on a second line drug, the same second line drug. Okay, this is a X-ray picture of the CT scan picture of the patient showing a persistent cavity despite of second line treatment. So he responded in the beginning, but CT showed a thick wall cavity. Okay. And uh, this patient underwent a upper lobectomy, right upper lobe and middle lobectomy. So he 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 benefited with the upper and middle lobectomy. He being diabetic, remember, if you see very carefully, this patient has got some lesions over here, left side. Okay, though the right was showing cavity. So he diabetic patient, they have again chance of relapse happening. Okay, so this is a post-operative case where the upper lobectomy has been done, good response. But if you see there some shadows over here on the left side. Okay. So he again becomes symptomatic despite of being treated. See now the lesion has increased again on the left side. So he was again scope. We found out the sensitivity report again. Change the line of therapy. I'm not going to the detail of it just to understand what exactly surgery means. Okay, and here this is a cavity. Now we subjected him for surgery for the left side also, left upper lobectomy. See what happened. Here the beta quinine was just started, and on compassionate ground we could. Acquire beta quinine for this patient and to add it to the regimen. Okay, after the second lobectomy is done, see this is a picture of his X-ray. It's completely clear X-ray, and it is still clear. Okay, 2013 two days, almost 10 years. Okay, 11, nine years. 
so you see that ki there is a bilateral lobectomy done and he is completely off this is now so right time surgery if the patient you do with a proper background regimen if you give patient can get cured completely from the dead full disease despite being his immunocompromised due to diabetes okay diabetes this is another patient carpenter who has got this shadows in the lungs sputum persistently positive and going fast his cavity increasing he was on the second line of therapy resistant line of therapy despite of that there was a persistent cavity and he had a hemoptysis that was the main problem okay and uh, this is a cavity so with the hemoptysis so now we decided to go for a neminectomy uh, uh, lobectomy for him but what happened is that he he had a extensive disease and he landed up with the neminectomy okay and uh, uh, this was a bronchopleural fistula he developed afterwards okay so he was having persistent sputum uh, secretions coming from the thoracic cavity see there is air fluid level so surgery went on very well but he developed a bronchopleural fistula because he has a disease on the other lobe also and he had a most important thing was the sputum positive persistent so whenever you operate patient who is sputum positive to decrease the respiratory load there is a chance that this patient can develop a bronchopleural fistula and like this okay then he underwent a thoracoplasty these are the another challenge we what to do we should, we never just say leave it the patient like that you know we subjected this patient for a thoracoplasty and see what happened now he is completely cured of this his sputum has become negative though there is a deformity he is living with a normal oxygen and normal carbon dioxide okay so after say now today is 2021 after 5 years 6 years he is still uh, doing very well so sometimes the surgery can cure this is a important thing is that ki uh, this is a treatment challenge is concerned that you should uh, use the drugs which are there like betaquiline dalamidin and other drugs but these are the uh, these drug have got side effects okay so we have to understand that uh, the duration of therapy you have to have uh, personalized okay and there are all other things which are there to understand ki um, uh, that patient's compliance also plays an important role as well as the management is concerned okay the compliance issues is another challenge okay and in this group of patient um, keeping the patient adherent to the uh, drug line of therapy when they are taking for 2 to 2 years or 2 and 1/2 years of treatment is very difficult okay and that is the whole reason that ki we are coming to a of shorter regimens in managing the mdr treatment so that the compliance will be better hetero resistant is another challenge okay when when you are treating what is the hetero resistant means hetero resistant is same means coexisting susceptible and resistant bacteria existing in the person either in the same area of the lung or maybe a different area in the lung or it may be if there are mdr tuberculosis which is multi organ involvement then there may be hetero in multi organ area also okay so may, maybe uh, lung may be sensitive brain may be resistant this is possible okay but generally hetero resistance found in around 5.38% of drug resistant tuberculosis and this is a how the hetero resistance can exist in the same area same lung or the body and this is something a challenging thing because you miss the diagnosis and then the patient doesn't never respond to your line of therapy if so if you can diagnose hetero resistance early probably whole well, genome sequencing has got a role to play over there we can probably treat them very well in the beginning and obviously that leads to a proper uh, control over the patient's tuberculosis control leading to lesser amount of spread of disease and lesser amount of latent tuberculosis developing in the contact people okay so um, i feel ki there are diagnostic and uh, therapeutic challenges uh, from current diagnosis to timely diagnosis and uh, 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 struggles for the extra pulmonary tuberculosis diagnosis and there are whatever the dilemma there of molecular and conventional techniques you have to solve that and there are therapeutic challenges uh, devising the correct regimen for the patient delaying the uh, um, uh, delay due to the cost availability of drug today a lot of drugs are not available still in our uh, like the clopidogrel is not available for the outside people dalamidin and betaquiline not available for the private uh, consultant when they are trying to treat the patient so we have to send to the government places and there are limitations there are some problems uh, over there also so these challenges are also going to be there uh, on the when when you manage the patient especially therapeutic challenges uh, uh, how the uh, the patients can get best manage, uh, care best treatment because there are limitation of government uh, organization when they are treating uh, such patients and holding the patient for such a prolonged period of time 
so this is something which when the public and private uh, uh, consultants when they are treating tuberculosis if they come together and solve these therapeutic issues availability drug etc and all that then probably the um, these challenges can be faced very very better okay so summarizing that mdr tb continues to be a real challenge and the phenotyping cultures won't lose their place in a diagnosis of algorithm better reliable rapid molecular tests are needed at an hour but uh, the what why i am saying phenotyping culture because these backup cultures helps us to get uh, like what i discussed in one of the case whole genome sequencing is a promising new uh, modality and newer anti tb drugs like bedaquilin and uh, delamidin etc should be accessible to the private sector that's very important so early diagnosis and prompt short course is a key to the success that's very important thank you